when I put one of these big ones together and we put this together last night, one of the first things that came to my mind is, man, that's going to take a lot of dirt to fill that rascal there. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. It's a beautiful Saturday here on the homestead. Got an early kickoff today. The dogs are going to start getting after them roosters at noon today. But before we call the dogs, we've got several things we need to do in the garden. So today we're going to be continuing along with our raised bed project in this plot behind me here. We're trying to get this done by the end of September. That's when our transplant should be ready in the greenhouse late September, early October. So trying to get this done by the end of the month. That way we'll have it ready. Then we can plant a lot of cool fall veggies in there. On our last video, we dug the peanuts that were on the end of this plot here. So now that those are out of the way, we can do a little prep on this plot, get it ready to set those raised beds in there in the next couple of videos. So we're gonna do some plot prep here, and then I'm gonna walk you through the process of assembling one of these Ollie Garden raised beds and show you kind of the different shapes and designs that we have. So here's where we dug those Valencia peanuts on that last video and made that delicious big old pot of boiled peanuts. As you can see, we still got a good many weeds left here that we need to take care of. And then over here where we had the soybean cover crop and mowed it down, it's pretty clean. There's a little bit of stubble sticking up here. I think I want to chop that up with the mower because we are going to till this today and my tiller will work a lot better if this stuff is chopped up a little more. Now I could probably get by without tilling this plot, just set the raised beds in there, but there's three reasons why I do want to till it. So one would be to level it out a little bit. Over there where those peanuts were, it's kind of healed up a little bit, so the tiller will help me kind of knock down that hill a little bit. Secondly, I want to kind of incorporate some of that debris into the soil and we set these raised beds when we fill them almost all the way to the top. I'm going to use some of our top soil here because I know it's got some good nutrients in it. I'm going to use some of that to kind of top off the raised beds. If I want to do that, I need to kind of incorporate this stuff in there so I can shovel up some of that top soil. Thirdly, we're going to be installing a main line for our drip irrigation system here. Don't know if we're gonna hook up the drip irrigation system, but we wanna put the main line underneath the beds. We're gonna to have to make a little furrow to do that. That will all make a lot more sense when we do it on the next video or the one after that. But for the sake of installing our main line, it's gonna make it a lot easier if that soil is tilled. So I'm gonna go grab the mower. We're gonna knock this down a little bit more, mow it a little closer, chop that stuff up a little better. Then we'll take the tiller, run over it one time, and see what we got. All right, all right, all right. Took two passes with the tiller to get to this point. It's not incorporated quite as well as I'd like it to be, but I think it's good enough. I think it'll work. I think it's soft enough. We can run through there with the wheel hoe, make a furrow for our main line, and also scoop up some of this to top off those beds. Now the other thing I got to do before we set these beds in here, something I'm not going to do today, but something that I got to do, has to do with those little rebar stobs. So we have those on all four corners of these 30 by 35 plots out here in the dream garden. I need to kind of re-square those up. Over time they may have been moved a hair bit, nudged with the lawnmower a little bit. So I'm going to have to do a little A squared plus B squared equals C squared get those all squared up because we'll be using those stobs to measure off of to make sure everything gets lined up properly with the raised beds in the plot. So we're in decent shape there as far as our plot prep goes, making good progress. Now let's talk about these raised beds and I'll show you how to put one together. So we're gonna be using four different setups slash configurations, whatever you wanna call it, of these Ollie Garden raised beds. These here are the 17 inch tall beds. I'll show you a taller one in a minute. So this 
is the same kit here. There's just 12 different ways to configure it or put it together. With this bigger one here, this big rectangle, we use all the panels that comes in the kit. With this one here, we don't use two of the panels that come in the kit. Yeah, I know that seems a little wasteful, but in this plot here, giving myself four foot of space between each bed, I didn't have room for another row of these. It was gonna be too tight. I did have room for one row of these. So that's why we went with that setup and just wanted to have something that looked a little different than having just all those in there. So in addition to those, we've got some of the tall ones. I think they're 32 inches tall, something like that. But they're also the 12 in one setup. So you can put them in 12 different configurations. I'll show you one of those in a minute as we put one together. We've also got some round ones. They're on the way. They're not here yet. They will be here within the next week. I think so. So we got four round ones as well. And so this is one of the tall ones. This is the 32 inch tall version. Me and Brooklyn and Abram put this one together last night. It's not completely done. We still gotta tighten up all the bolts and put the rubber safety edging around the top there. But this is the same configuration that I showed you out there near the garden with that big rectangle. Same setup as that, it's just taller. So these taller ones will go kind of along the back row of the plot and then the shorter ones will go in front of those. That way the height is kind of staggered there. Now these things are not difficult to put together at all, but they do take a little time. I found with the shorter ones, it takes me about an hour and a half to put together. So I put together some in my office, I did some in the living room on the rug in there. And the shorter ones I can put together inside because once put together, I can get them out the door. These taller ones, can't get them out of the door unless you got double doors. So we have to put those together out here under the carport. And we did it on our camping rug here. That way the bottom doesn't get scratched up on the concrete. So with the shorter ones I showed you earlier, one person can put those together pretty easily. These taller ones here, you really need two people, especially to get those ones down at the bottom there. So you have to have somebody on the outside pushing the bolt through and then somebody on the inside tightening the nut around that bolt. So what we did last night is we had Abram in the middle of it here and me and Brooklyn were on the outside putting the bolts in and then he would put the nut on inside of there. So I've got two more of these tall ones here that we need to put together. So I wanna show you how we get from box to that right there. So we'll open up this box, show you what you get inside the box, show you kind of how it's packaged put a couple pieces together and then we'll finish this one up. All right, so let's open this baby up and I'll show you how it goes. These things are packaged pretty dang well. So first of all, we to take this piece right here out. We'll go ahead and get this box out. This is what has our nuts and bolts and instructions in it. We'll pull out these curved pieces here. There we go. All right. So for these 12 in one kits, whether it's the 17 inch tall version or the 32 inch tall version like this, you get the curved pieces there, you get what they call the short pieces there, the long pieces there, and then inside that little box, you've got a pair of gloves, you've got your instructions there. This is the rubber safety edging that goes around the top. And then you got your bag of nuts, washers, and bolts. And these are all the same, which makes it really easy to put together. You don't have to keep up with a bunch of different nuts and bolts and stuff. All the bolts and washers and nuts are the same. Now each one of these metal pieces here is wrapped in plastic on both sides so they don't get skin up during shipping. So the first thing you gotta do is pull this plastic off of there. It's kind of like that stuff that comes on the screen of your TV or your microwave. If you buy a new TV or microwave, it's not hard to pull off. It just takes a little time to get it all off. Comes off pretty easy here, but that takes a little time to do before you get ready to start actually putting the pieces together. We're going to pull this plastic off a few pieces so we can show you how we start to put it together. 
So I got the plastic pulled off those two curved pieces there and I was about to pull it off this big piece here and it reminded me I want to show you something. Now I haven't seen this on any of the other kits except the tall ones and with these longer pieces here a few of them have been kind of tabbed over like that. Looks like they got damaged in shipping at some point. Now in my previous gig we shipped pretty heavy stuff all over the country all over the world for that matter so I kind of understand how UPS and some of these other couriers can be pretty rough on your stuff no matter how well you package it. Now if you're one of those type of people and I know they're out there and it's okay if you are if you're one of those type of people that's like I paid this much for this it better come to me in pristine condition you could probably call them and they'd be glad to send you some replacements but I'm going to show you the easy fix so you don't have to wait on something like that. So basically all we need to do is just kind of bend this back up a little bit. Now I don't want to skin it up with my vice grips here. So I'm going to put this rag around it. I'm just going to grab it right there. And kind of straighten it back up a little bit. And when we put it all together and put the bolts in there, it'll all kind of match up and come together just fine. But that right there is just about good as new. All right, so we got three pieces unwrapped there, which would be enough to kind of show you guys how they start to come together. So in the instructions for these 12-in-1 kits, it shows you all 12 different configurations that you can do with these kits. Not every configuration uses all the pieces that are included in the box. So we have done option 10. Those are those skinny ones I showed you earlier. That goes together without two of the short pieces that are included. And then option four, where is it at? There it is, is the one we're putting together with these tall ones here. So we do use all the pieces there. So each diagram shows you where the corner pieces, the long pieces, and the short pieces go. So first off, let's pour all our nuts and bolts and washers in this little Tupperware so they're easier to get to. And we won't be needing that wrench there. So we'll start putting these pieces together based on our diagram in the instructions. Now I haven't found that it matters how you overlap the pieces. We could just as easily put this curved piece on top of this long piece here. Either way, it doesn't seem to matter. I've just been trying to stay consistent with it as far as the different configurations go so they all look the same, but it doesn't really matter how you overlap it. And as is the case with anything like this that you're putting together, you don't want to tighten everything down until you've got all the bolts in place. So we just take a bolt, a washer that goes through the outside here, and then we put the nut on it on the inside and just hand tighten it. And I'll show you how it goes from the other side just so you can see. So we got our bolt and our washer here, our nut here. So we'll go through on that side. And then right here, put that nut on there and just hand tighten it down. Now for the shorter ones, the 17 inch tall ones, you could probably put those on a big table and put them together. But for these taller ones, I don't see any way you could do it except on the ground like this because you've got to lean over both sides, get way down here. And this is on a table. You'd have to be standing on the table to get them both in there unless you had a couple hands helping you. So that's why I found it's easier to do it on the ground. We just use the rug there so we don't skin it up. Okay, so we got all the nuts and bolts in place and hand tighten for this end section there. And what we would do is just keep plugging along pieces there. Keep attaching new pieces based on what our diagram tells us until we get to this right here. Now you want to be a little careful not to move this thing too much until all the bolts are tightened. Once all the bolts are tightened, it's really rigid and really sturdy. So wherever you put it together, make sure you got plenty of room on all four sides to do your bolt tightening. Now I'm going to see if I can step over this without castrating myself so I can show you how to put or tighten down these bolts here. So. This kit comes with this little wrench right here. It would take you all day if you did it with this wrench. This first one I put together, I tightened them down with a hand socket. And that took quite a while. I'm just kind of stubborn as I was like, I'm going to finish this one with a hand socket. But all the rest of them, I've been using my impact here. You just got to be a little bit careful with it. 
I just go kind of half throttle with it. I don't want to tighten them too tight. So what I do is take my screwdriver on this end and just give it a couple pops there. I don't want to tighten them too tight and put a dent in that metal. All right, so I got all those tight in there except for those ones on the very, very bottom. I can reach them, but it's not real comfortable. So I'll wait till Brooklyn gets back, let her hold the screwdriver for me, and I'll get those ones on the very, very bottom there. Just take a little time. There's over a hundred bolts there, so you can just imagine. You got to take your time with it. If you got kids that like putting together Legos, like Abram. They'll love helping out with this. He really liked helping us the last couple nights putting these together. Now the last step, once you get everything tightened, is to put on what they call this rubber safety edge and keeps you from dealing with those sharp edges on the top there. Now this is pretty easy to put on. It takes a little time to get the hang of it. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Now it has these little metal pieces inside here. But once you press it on here, it kind of clamps around it and sticks good. Now it's really easy to put it on on these places where you don't run into a connection there. When you run into these connections, it can be a little tricky. I have found it's easier coming here with my knife and spread this apart a little bit and it goes over those connections a lot better. You could obviously use a screwdriver for this if you wanted to, but I've been using my knife. So take my knife and then I can get it to slide over that connection there a lot easier just like that and we keep working away all the way around just like that and then once you get all the way back around with the rubber safety edge and you can see there's a little bit extra left over there so we try to cut this as close as we can get it so we can get it matched up here just like that and that's how one of these bad boys come together. They look really nice and they're really sturdy. I think we're really going to like them. I think they're going to last a very, very long time. Now the shorter ones obviously take much less time to put together than these big ones. These big ones are going to take the longest to put together. I haven't put together the round ones yet because they're not here, but I don't think they're going to take too long. When I put one of these big ones together and we put this together last night, one of the first things that came to my mind is man that's going to take a lot of dirt to fill that rascal there so us pulling off this big raised bed project in time for fall planting required a couple things to come together first obviously the donations we got from you guys and we're super super thankful for that we couldn't have done it without all of you who decided to help out the other thing is the soil part of the equation. So if I had to pay, if I had to buy a bag soil to fill these things, it would be a much slower execution of the plan. Thankfully, as I told you before, got a friend down the road, his dad's got a sawmill and they've supposedly got piles and piles of composted wood chips that they're gonna give to us. I gotta go get them. Got to figure out a you know good way to go get them and unload them, but don't have to pay for those, and we can fill the majority of the beds with those. Now I know a lot of people have mentioned doing the Hugel culture thing, filling it with wood, but any extra wood I have usually goes camping with me. Firewood's kind of expensive, so I tend to take any extra logs and stuff I have, and they go on camping trips with us. So we're going to use this free composted wood chips to fill most of the beds, and then we're going to top them off with some of our topsoil compost, things like that. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the progress on this project and seeing how those raised beds come together. And hopefully if you were on the fence about trying these raised beds, that helped you make up your mind one way or the other. And don't forget, if you want to give these raised beds a try, the website is ollygardens.com. You can use the code LazyDogFarm to get 10% off your order. So the next steps will be kind of squaring up that plot, as I mentioned. Then we got to make some furrows to lay our main line for our drip irrigation. And then we can set our raised beds 
in the plot on top of that main line now even if i don't have the round raised beds here and assembled i can still set the rest of the bed still pretty much install all the main line without having those round beds already assembled and then when we get those put together we can put those in place so we'll be sure to take you guys along as we bust it and try to get this project completed over the next few weeks if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life